It's Wednesday, February 8th, 2012, and today we're actually going to talk a little bit about Linux. Shortly after Christmas, it came upon me that I had a little bit of budgetary freedom, so I found a really good deal online and I bought a newer PC. It is an Asus PC, an Essentio, I'm not sure on the model number, with a 6-core AMD processor, 8 gigs of RAM, a terabyte hard drive, and a halfway decent ATI video card. I managed to get it for like $250 refurbished, so I could not complain about it. However, since that time, I've not had really the time to come down here and work on it and install Linux on it and everything until the last couple of days. So I've spent the last few days testing different distributions on it, and I finally settled upon one that I'm going to try to use for a little while now. It's called OpenSUSE 12.1 KDE Edition. Now, as you may or may not remember, my experiences with OpenSUSE in the past have not been very good, so I am surprised to say that it's running fairly well for me so far. I've been able to get the software that I want, and I've been able to update it, and I've been able to install the graphics drivers and uh, basically make use of KDE in a lot of ways that I haven't been able to do before. Not saying specifically that OpenSUSE has done something differently that uh, other distros haven't. I think I've just sort of grown and changed as a person a little bit, making it a little bit easier for me to use it and maybe just more comfortable using it. Uh, however, I thought I'd give you a quick screencast and just show you what I've been doing and what I've been using it for and uh, some of the things I've done with KDE. Very limited because these are just my initial impressions of OpenSUSE 12.1. Uh, so let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below the video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the screencast. So as you can see here, this is my desktop running OpenSUSE 12.1. Let me go ahead and open up the My Computer icon up here just to show you the specifics. All right, you see it's pulled up sysinfo. Over here on the right, the OS information shows we're running Linux kernel version 3.1.9, 64-bit of course. Uh, system is OpenSUSE 12.1 64-bit, and we are running KDE 4.7.2, quote-unquote, release 5. Also, we are using the ATI FGLRX driver. Not sure why it says 2D driver there, something I'll have to look into. Over here you can see all of my disk information, the storage stuff. Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of uh, larger drives I'm using for my backups that I really need to get in sync. This one I haven't done anything with yet. Just, yeah, again, haven't had time. Uh, over here is my other system information, CPU info, there's my 6-core AMD Phenom, 8 gigs of RAM, common folders that you might use. I, I really like this as a my computer type thing. It, it's a, a bit of a step away from what the traditional Microsoft thing would be. And really, there's, there's not something that uh, most other distros would have, excuse me, most other desktop environments would have. I, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is a KDE-specific thing, so... Anyway, very, very pleased with some of the things like that that I've found with OpenSUSE so far. Uh, another example of that would be the just YAST in general. If you go to the administrator settings, it's going to ask for a password, and that's fine. Once that comes up, there we go. There's pretty much most of the things you'd want to configure on a system, and uh, all at one place very easy to, to get to everything you could possibly want to do. You can change your bootloader, your date and time, kernel settings, partition your system, Oh, what else is there in here? There's lots of stuff. Your host names, your DSL and ISDN, if anyone's still using modems. Yeah, I don't know. It's nice to have those older options available just in case. I, I don't know. Uh, Samba server, Windows domain membership. This, to be honest, is one of the primary reasons why I even looked at this. One of my, uh, the guys that is in the lug that I help run uh, mentioned just how easy it is to take a machine from an image uh, blast it out to all of your systems and have them back on the domain running OpenSUSE in very very little amount of time so this is something I'd like to try out at my work and to be honest the the people that I work with are becoming a little more open-minded so it would be nice to see uh, the possibility of moving to uh, Linux on the desktop using something like this in the next couple of years I don't think it's gonna happen but I'd like to, to think th think uh, big there uh, one of the other things I really liked about this is the ability to install the hypervisor and tools directly from here. I did that last night. I haven't had a chance to mess with it yet. I have rebooted though, so I should be able to click create virtual machines. Uh, maybe not. Uh, hypervisor is not running. For KVM, you got to load the modules. I thought it was supposed to happen on, on startup, but maybe not. This is the virtual machine manager that, that will run them once uh, once the virtualization stuff is actually going, but I don't know. 
yeah, all I did was click on this and it ran through all of its little installation, said here's what you want to install. I don't know. One of those things I just kind of liked about it, I mean, the, the Yes Control Center is one of the things that really sets OpenSUSE apart from other distros, from what I understand. What else do we have? We've got the Yes 2 Software Installation Center, if I can find where that is. I normally, uh, I've been going back and forth between the two different menus. It's Install Remove Software, of course. Uh, and I've been using the uh, slab menu primarily, but going back and forth is just as easily as right-clicking and saying switch to application launcher style. See in here, if you go under computer, there's your system info, your install remove software, and yes, all very easy to get to. I just kind of prefer the uh, the look of the classic menu. It reminds me sort of, of uh, GNOME 2. And it pulled up on my second screen, but here is yes. It took a little while to pull up. But in here, you can look at your package groups, all the different stuff that you can install. I will probably be installing GNOME here sometime in the very near future just to sort of get my, my hands uh, into the GNOME desktop. There are some weird issues with trying to get Pulse Audio fully integrated with KDE, and I am a heavy Pulse Audio user when it comes to trying to switch between uh, audio devices on the fly. As you probably know, I'm using a USB mic right now to do the screencast, so it would be nice to be able to do that. Anyway, so you have the option for GNOME, KDE, XFCE, and other desktops like IceWM, Window Maker, FVWM, Brain's not working right now. Uh, yeah, there's lots in open, open box and I didn't see LXDE in there, though. That's a little interesting. Maybe I just... I don't know. It's There's probably another repo to add for it. That's another thing I've sort of noticed about this, is if you don't want uh, the stuff that's in the default repos, there are a lot of extra repos out there. You just have to know which ones to add and where to find them. Uh, for example, a lot of the multimedia stuff is coming from a different repo I added called Packer... Pac-Man, excuse me. Package? I can't remember. I, I searched for Caden Live and that was the the one easy way to get it was to actually go through this extra repo added it it's got the uh, latest available version looks like there's a, an alternate version available that came out today cool i may have to try that later so yeah there's lots and lots of software available i don't know if there's quite as much as you might find on other distros but it does get the job done i mean everything that i've needed so far i've been able to get it sometimes takes a little bit more work trying to find the repo but it definitely is available. One of the issues I have noticed though, like I, like I mentioned there before, yes to the software installer is a little bit slow. Uh, once you tell it to install something, a lot of times it doesn't really give you the info about what it's doing. It'll just sort of say downloading at this speed and not tell you what's happening. Uh, not a big deal if you have the time to devote to that, but whatever. Uh, the other way that you can install software, of course, is through Zipper. Uh, if, if I wanted to, I could search Zipper. Search, I don't know, Caden Live. And there we go. We've got Caden Live shows installed, a brief summary of it. Uh, if I wanted to install something new, oh, I don't know, zipper, search, GNOME. And yes, I realize I say GNOME funny. Uh, just the old style way of saying it. I should probably change back, but whatever. And there we've got GNOME Shell extensions and GNOME Shell, all these things you could install. Uh, there's probably a way like Fedora does it to install the entire desktop edition. I just haven't found it yet. I probably will in the near future. But overall, my, my impressions of OpenSUSE so far have been very good. I've had a pretty easy time getting used to KDE this time around. As you, If you've been following the channel for a while, you probably know I've tried KDE in the past and didn't have the best time with it. But it's it seems a little bit easier. Maybe it's a newer version. Maybe it's me. I don't know. One of the things that I did find kind of cool about this, and I think I'll end on this, is the Activity Manager. I just hadn't spent much time with it before. Being able to switch between the different uh, quote-unquote activities, see I switched from the traditional desktop with the widgets all over it to the icons, which, I, yeah, you can add widgets to that as well, or to Search and Launch, which I think used to be called the, uh, the Netbook Interface. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting to see this being one of the, the standard interfaces you can choose because you can select a group and it wiggles around and rearranges itself. Very interesting there. You can, uh, you know, take these things and make them uh, your little dock across the top. It sort of has a feeling like, like a Unity or like a, a GNOME shell, but at the same time it is, it looks like a tablet interface. I have to say that. Uh, let's see if I can just pin something up there very quickly. I, I did this once earlier. There we go. Conquer. Very easy to get up there. And then you take a minus to get it out. Um, yeah. Works very well. Gets the job done if you want to use that. 
There are additionally a bunch of other activities you can do. I know this isn't really a, a KDE review, but I, I figure it's one of the main features of OpenSUSE. I mean, just like any other Linux distro, it's Linux plus a bunch of apps plus a desktop environment wrapped around it, and this is the one that I've chosen. So here are the activities you can go through, the desktop icons like I showed earlier, development activity, you can read these, multimedia activity. A couple of these are ones I've added by hand, like the development, multimedia, uh, I think I added the school one. The school one was kind of interesting. You see I very easily have a new activity out there with all sorts of little preloaded widgets on it that I can mess with. Uh, you can take notes on it and you can use this as a little blackboard if you want to draw. I thought that was kind of interesting. You may be some, seeing some graphical glitches. I, I noticed when I did this earlier that I did have some, especially when I would hit the activities button. Maybe not so much anymore. But uh, overall it's been very stable, very fast. I uh, had a few issues getting the ATI driver installed, but that was not really a huge deal. The installations do take a little bit of time to get done, but if you want a good stable business solution, uh, or even a, a very good desktop solution with relatively up-to-date software, or actually decently up-to-date software, it has kernel 3.1.9, uh, this is definitely a good alternative out there. Most of the sites I've noticed developing software for Linux do either DEB or RPM, which would be uh, Ubuntu, Debian, whatever, or Fedora, OpenSUSE, PC, Linux OS, whatever. Uh, or specifically, a lot of times they'll mention OpenSUSE as one of the top three that they develop for. So it is one of the... Uh, it's actually an older distro. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the history of it. This is just a first impression. Uh, but I hope this was helpful in some way. I really, I just wanted to get it off my chest that I've been using this, even though it has only been for a short time. I think that's all for today, though. I'm going to kick it back over to myself from the past, and uh, I'll talk to you later. So that's it. That was my impression of OpenSUSE 12.1's KDE edition. I may go ahead and try out GNOME on it at some point in the near future. There are some things Pulse Audio related that I would like to see working a little more integrated. So, uh, But definitely let me know what you think about OpenSUSE 12.1 in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time and your patience and your support, and I will see you again in the very near future. Bye, guys.